So, um, yes, you are right. So there is indeed a pipeline of vaccines that are being developed against other microbes, for example, respiratory syncytial virus, which is quite common in childhood, also influenza, um, and so on. So there are very many that are currently being developed. And um, my conviction is that each of these vaccines must be expected to be just as toxic and poisonous as the ones that we have seen against uh, used against COVID. Um, and importantly, the toxicity that we have seen seems to be mostly due to the vaccines doing what they are designed to do. There are problems with contaminations and they cannot be overlooked, they are relevant and they might be important for long-term toxicity, for example also part of the uh, apparent rise in the uh, rate of cancer that we are seeing in vaccinated people, but simply the vaccines doing what they are designed to do, namely the inducing um, our own body cells to express a foreign antigen and to display it on the cell surface, that will cause our body cells to come under attack by the immune system. The immune system will recognize and attack and destroy the body cells which are producing those foreign antigens. And this happens in principle everywhere. We are promised by the um, authorities that the vaccines after injection should stay in the, at the injection site and should cause inflammation and destruction only locally. But uh, we know that this is not uh, strictly true. Quite a substantial fraction of the vaccines distributes throughout the body to other organs. It can, for example, reach cells in the heart, heart muscle, this is how myocarditis comes about, the heart muscle cells take up vaccine particles, they express the spike protein, the immune system recognizes those and attacks those heart muscle cells. And heart muscle cells can never be replaced. A heart muscle cell, once destroyed, can only be replaced by scar tissue. And um, if you have scar tissue in the heart muscle, then um, it can obviously not uh, participate in the contraction, but on top of that, heart muscle cells must not only do their work of contracting, they must also participate in spreading the electrical wave of excitation throughout the entire heart muscle. The heart muscle really is a functional whole. In many other organs, you have small functional units which all act in parallel, for example, in the liver and the kidney. And if some of those are destroyed, it does not really impact the others. With the heart, it's different. If you have a scar in the heart, it acts a little bit like a rock in the surf at the sea. Okay, so you have the waves breaking at the rock and they are, the waves are getting bent out of shape, so to speak. And this also happens through the electrical wave of excitation to the, that uh, spreads across the heart. And the risk of such a distortion in the electrical wave uh, causing a severe arrhythmia is greater at a higher heart rate. So you have, the faster your heart beats, the greater the risk of a sudden arrhythmia and this is why you see all these young athletes dropping like flies more or less on the, on the, in the football field and so on. They are exercising themselves, they have a high heart rate and all of a sudden there is a sudden severe arrhythmia, for example ventricular fibrillation and then they just uh, are at the mercy of the medics and of God essentially. So this is a uh, risk which stays with them. So even after the acute phase of the myocarditis is over, the scars are left behind and they will persistently create this risk of, um, of um, sudden arrhythmia. And again, to close the loop, um, this, we must assume that this risk is not limited to mRNA vaccines against COVID. It is really an inherent flaw of this entire vaccine platform. I can go on and explain why exactly why exactly this risk is greater with this type of vaccine technology than with other types of vaccine technology. I'm not sure how much detail you, you would like. Maybe you can. Okay. So, um, most traditional vaccines simply contain 
proteins, protein molecules, either purified proteins, for example, and then also typically biochemically inactivated proteins, for example, in order to produce a tetanus a vaccine, you isolate the toxic protein or this tetanus toxin as a purified protein in preparation, then you subject it to some sort of chemical inactivation so that it loses its toxic activity, but it is still recognizable by the immune system as the uh, as derived from the tetanus toxin. So you inject that and then what happens is that the immune system simply starts uh, making antibodies against it. But uh, the tetanus toxin as such, or this, this inactivated uh, toxin, won't really do much in the body by itself. It will be more or less passive. And um, so it will induce the immune system to, to produce antibodies, but there will be no direct uh, damage to other body cells just because this tetanus toxin is there. That's a little bit simplified, but for the most part that holds too. Then we also have inactivated virus vaccines. For example, the current uh, SARC vaccine, which is used against poliomyelitis. So you simply grow up the um, uh, virus in some cell cultures, you isolate it, you inactivate it again in a manner similar to the tetanus toxin, you inject that, and then just as the immune system makes antibodies against this bacterial tetanus toxin, it can do the same against the viral proteins contained in this inactivated virus vaccine. Now, the most interesting comparison would be a live virus vaccine, for example, the measles virus. Here you inject an actual live virus. This has been has acquired some mutations relative to the wild type measles virus. You inject that, it is taken up by some cells and uh, then also the immune system will attack some of the cells and some will get destroyed. But the one difference here is that the amount that you inject is far lower than with the mRNA vaccines. Okay? So on top of that, if you already have existing immunity, for example against measles, you might have already existing immunity, then the immune system will snuff out this infection which is going on very early on, right? So in order for the immune system to respond at all, you need the viral load, the number of virus particles in the body, will need to reach a certain level. The virus would have to grow up by multiplying in several cells successively to reach that amount before the immune system actually kicks in and does something about it. But if you already have immunity, then the immune system will take care of the problem very early on and the, a significant viral load will never be reached, you will never notice. I mean, this is what we mean by immunity. If you have immunity to a virus, you get reinfected with it. A very uh, short, for a very short time span, this virus might succeed in multiplying, but because the immune system remembers and now responds much faster, then a high viral load will never be reached. Now, the problem with the mRNA vaccines is that um, the mRNA vaccine particles are not recognizable to the immune system as foreign antigens. A true virus will always carry its card, so to speak, on the surface. It will always say, I am a measles vaccine, I am a polio virus, uh, sorry, yes, a vaccine virus, or I am a wild type virus of, of some sort. It will always be recognizable to the immune system. The mRNA vaccine particles, they contain only the genetic blueprint, but the surface consists of completely generic, uh, unrecognizable lipid molecules. So even if you already have a high level of immunity, these particles will succeed, they will not be intercepted by any antibodies, the antibodies cannot recognize them, the particles will actually enter your body cells, the body cells will start to make the spike protein, and only then will the immune system actually respond. So the immune system is unable to recognize and intercept the particles before they can enter your cells. It can only respond after those particles have entered your cells and after the spike protein has been made. But this then leads the immune system to think that these cells have been infected by the virus and it is going to deal with them accordingly. So, in a nutshell, with a virus that reinfects you, your pre-existing immunity will protect you. With an mRNA vaccine, 
that is injected into you and you already, while you already have immunity, this immunity will make matters worse. It will compound and increase the damage. And this is why we see with the mRNA vaccines more severe damage after the second or further repeat injections than with the first one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.